Hey, good um, morning. So I just wanted to give you guys a big shout out. Um, I've had something on my mind this morning and I just had a great conversation with Pastor Mark Valadez, who I love to pieces. Um, super st stoked about being a part of that church. And um, so anyways, that's beside the point, but <laughs> I just talked and prayed with him. And so anyways, um, I wanted to share with you a memory that came up on my Facebook wall. There's two of them and uh, I, I spent the morning praying with a friend and when I shared this story, she started bawling and the power of God hit so hard. So every time I share this God story in a church, I mean, it gets to people. It's just crazy how God uses it. So I'm gonna um, share it right now. So. Um, so anyways, it was several, several years ago. It was um, after me and my kids were homeless. I was going through my divorce and uh, things were really, really hard financially for me. And um, I was like in school trying to like figure life out, getting an education. I was cleaning houses. I was doing anything I could, recycling cans to try to make bills. And um, and so anyways, part of the thing I had, um, you know, all the custody and everything. And part of it was, is I couldn't be late on anything. I, I couldn't have the utilities get turned off and I had to have all the bills paid. And, and so, you know, I could get my kids taken away and they could get, you know, for neglect or for not being responsible and all stuff. So it was a gnarly court case, but I was always really diligent. And I'm telling you all this for a reason. So, um, you know, when, one day I got um, the mail and I came home and I had a 24 hour notice to pay the PG&E bill. And oh my gosh, I just, I just began weeping and I'm like, Lord, for years and years, I've always been the person to pay the single woman's um, bills and, and get them housing and get them cars and do all this stuff. And now God, I'm in this, I'm in this funky weird place and Lord, I need you to crash in like, God, I'm going to get my utilities turned off. And it was $199 and some odd change. And, and at the time my son had walked in the door and, and I always homeschool all three of my kids. And when I was going through my divorce, they had to be put in regular school because I had to go find a real job. And, um, and I was, you know, doing 18 units and all that stuff. And so, so my son, um, had gone through a lot of stuff and a lot of stuff with his father and it was gnarly and, um, and he wouldn't mind me sharing that, I don't think. And so anyways, um, he came home from school one day. He was a brand new student, Tuscarora High School, and he has this pamphlet and it's for a class ring. And he comes up to me, says, hey mom, you know what, I just wanna belong. Like, I just, I really want this class ring and do you think you could get it for me? And I looked at him and I wanted to get it for him with all my heart and I just kinda of got teary-eyed and I said, let's pray. And I said, Josh, I just got this PG&E bill and it's $199 and some odd change. And honey, how much, how much is that ring? And he goes, it's $333 and some odd change. And, I'm like, wow, that's a lot of money. And I said, but you know what? God, when, when you delight yourself in the Lord, he'll give you the desires of your heart. And that's a real desire of your heart. And I said, he goes, I know, mom, it's just, that would be great. I could have this. I could feel like I could belong. And, and I said, yeah, you know, especially with everything you've gone through and stuff, how awesome would that be? So we prayed, I gathered, you know, my kids together. We prayed and I said, Lord, could you just give him the desire of his heart? And I said, Josh, as soon as I pay that electric bill, I'm gonna get to that class ring. And I said, we're gonna trust God for a miracle. So I, I was stressed and I was like praying in the spirit the whole time. I go to bed, it's around 10 o'clock at night and I get this phone call and it's a guy from Norway. And um, I look at the number and it's some foreign country and, and I pick up the phone and I'm like, hello. And he's like, Shelly, you know, with this accent, Shelly, you know, this accent. And he goes, my name's Troy. And I said, I, I, I don't remember you. And he goes, several years ago, you were having your Holy Ghost Kager meetings at your house, which fancy word for all night, you know, Holy Ghost Jesus, you know, we just have miracle signs and wonders worship. People just cry crashed on our, you know, couch and brought tents. And I mean, it was crazy fun, but we saw every kind of miracle you could possibly think. And, and all our own agenda was just to serve God. So anyways, this family found out about our Holy Ghost Kager parties and there was no alcohol. It's just a sim symbolic term of getting drunk in Jesus. Um, but they flew all the way from Norway to come and have me prophesy over them. And for some reason I didn't remember at first. And so it was a husband and wife and I think they had seven kids. And anyway, so they came and I, I prophesied over them. And there was hundreds and hundreds of people that came in and out of our house. And I totally forgot about it. He goes, so I'm in Norway and I have a dream four nights ago. And the Lord speaks to me and says, when you go to America, you need to stop at Shelly Wood's house and pay her electric bill. Now, mind you, he hadn't talked to me in 10 years or something. I, I, he didn't even know I was going through divorce. He knew nothing about me. And so he goes, he woke up and he's like, huh. And so, you know, he called me from LA and he says, I'm in America. I'm in the US and I'm driving tonight from LA to San Francisco. So if it's okay with you, I'd like to come up, be in between. I'll be there 
here around 4 a.m. and I'll hand you the money. And he goes, but I'm a little hungry, so could you feed me? And I thought of that old, you know, the story in the Bible about the prophet, can you feed me first? And I didn't have any food hardly. I had like a like a little bit of soup left. And, and I said, yeah, absolutely. And I began weeping. I said, how much um, did God tell you to pay? And he goes, $200. And I looked at my bill and it was like $199 and some odd change. And I began sobbing. I was just like, God, we cannot make this up. He told a man all the way in Norway, he gave God, God gave him a dream all the way in another country that when he was in the U.S. to come pay my electric bill, that's how much Jesus loves me and my kids. And I thought of what this guy used to tell me all the time. He said, dig the well before you need it. And I didn't realize I dug the well, you know, so many years prior, just by obeying God and prophesying over him. I didn't know I was going to be the person instead of handing out groceries or handing out money for utility bills. I was going to be that single mom crying out to God, pleading for him to pay my bills. And so I'm sobbing and I'm just like, oh, I, I'd be so honored. You know, I just, I'm so blown away that God would tell you that and that, you know, you are willing to do this. And so I set my alarm comes knocking at my door at four o'clock in the morning. I give him soup and he gives me the $200 and we fellowship for a minute. And then, um, he goes to walk outside and he goes to get in his car and he comes back in. He goes, I can't remember. Do you have a son? And mind you, my kids were in sleep, asleep upstairs. And I said, yeah, I have a son. And he goes, the Lord just spoke to me and said, your son has a desire of his heart that God wants to grant. And God wants to put a ring on his finger and the Lord wants him to know that he has never forsaken him and that he's a good, good father and he's a father to the fatherless and he's a father to those who have been abused and abandoned. Mind you, he had no idea any of my situation or about my son or about the ring or about Josh wanting to belong. And, um, he goes, I want to, I want to, um, I want to, I want to, I want to give that kid that desire of his heart. And, um, and he starts pulling every dime and every nickel out of his pocket and he puts out all of the money on the table and he's counting it out and it's $333 and some odd change. And he goes, I hope that this goes to giving whatever your son wants. And I'm bawling at this point. I'm like beside myself. And I go over to the kitchen table and I get the pamphlet and I show this man this pamphlet, how my son, that night asked for a class ring and it was literally $333 and some odd change. It was exactly to the penny of what that guy put on that table that day. Oh, I cry every single time I tell a story because it is so precious. And so, um, anyways, I said, my son just, I told him the whole story and now he's bawling, you know, and I said, when he wakes up, I can't wait to tell him. I cannot wait to tell him the story. And so anyways, I hugged the guy goodbye and I prayed with him and he left. And I ran up the stairs at like 4.45 in the morning. I'm like, Josh, wake up, wake up, wake up. This guy came all the way from Norway and he just paid our electric bill. I got the money to pay it. And guess what else? Here's all this money. And I gave it to him. And I'm like, honey, you can get your class ring. And so the Lord was so faithful the next morning. He was so excited as a young man. And he got to order that class ring. And he had it for several years. And um, and one day it was just gone. He didn't know like if he dropped it or, you know, came off his hand or whatever. And we had, you know, he had got a task at high school. And so we prayed. He says, mom, I feel like that's like a covenant ring. Like I need to keep that ring. It's like how God showed me that he's my dad. And, um, and so anyways, we mysteriously get a phone call one day and it's from Paso Robles High School in a totally different town, totally different school. And it was like four or five years later. And they said, Hey, do you have a son named Joshua Wood? We found his class ring. And, um, and, and so Josh went and got it and I was blown away and I sat him down. I said, Josh, this is to show you that you have a covenant with the Lord Jesus Christ. He's your father. And even when you feel like you lost it, even when you feel like you backslid or you walked away or you did anything, he never, ever leaves us and he will hunt you down. He goes after the one and he ch chases after the one and leaves the 99. So sometimes we don't even understand it all. 
But it's like, that's a classic example how God found him once more time. And that's a classic reminder of how he's so faithful to him, right? He's a father to the fatherless. And I want to tell you right now that if you had a father or if you have a father who maybe he was, you know, not a good dad, or maybe he abused you, or maybe he was in drugs, alcohol, or maybe you never saw him hardly. It's like, you can understand this better than anybody that he is a good, good father. He will never leave you. He will never abandon you. He will make you feel belong. He it belonged because you belong to him right? And it's like, we have that covenant with God. And it was just so precious to me, the faithfulness of the Lord with that. And so, man, it gets to me every single time, the goodness of our God. And, and I share that story in churches all the time. And and it came up as my memory today. And I was like, I need to share that story. It's going to bless somebody and touch somebody. So um, it, anyways, it was so precious. God knows down to the penny of what you need. He knows when we dig our well in years prior, we don't even know what we're doing half the time. We're just obeying God. That one of those times that you're going to be the person. I was always the person with a food ministry, rescuing women, rescuing families, paying their electric bill, giving them gas money, getting them groceries. And I didn't know I was digging a well that I was going to be that person years later and then my own children were going to have to have their needs met and that God would use people from in another country to minister to me and to and to love on me and to not only that but I told Josh I said you know, when your ways are pleasing to the Lord, he'll withhold nothing from you. Uh, he, he, he withholds nothing to the uprightly. And he longs to give us the desires of our heart. And that ring was a desire. It wasn't like a need. But, but God wanted to bless him to say, you belong to me. You belong to me. And I want to bless you and show you how much I love you because I'm a good daddy. So somebody needs to hear this today. And, uh, and if you didn't have the best relationship with your dad, or maybe you just only spent a couple of years with them towards the end, or maybe you just always longed to spend time with him, but he was an absentee father. I just want to say the Lord loves you and he wants to rescue you. I don't care if you're 10 or if you're 50 or 80, God wants to rescue you this day. He wants to heal some of that brokenness where you always are wanting his acceptance. You're always wanting to feel loved by your father because that's a, that's a need that God puts in our hearts, right? And when it doesn't get met, we long for that acceptance from every other avenue. We become overachievers. We become, you know, crazy to get acceptance from other people. And God just wants to meet you in that place and say, I accept you. I love you. I want to heal your broken heart. I want to fix those areas that are broken in the name of Jesus. The Father God, whoever this is for, whether it's male or female, just like you touched my son, just like you paid my bills, God, I pray, Lord, that whoever's in need of a miracle today would get it in the name of Jesus. And maybe you're a mom who has a son or a daughter that's a wayward child. And I just want to say, Lord, rescue Rescue that child this day. Rescue that child this day, God, in the name of Jesus. I just bless whoever's watching this today. I, I bless them with your peace and your love and your goodness, God. Wrap your arms around every single person who watches my videos today, God, and just show them how good you are, God. I know of your goodness, God. I see it every day. Anyways, I just thank you and I praise you. Amen. I just love you guys so much. And uh, when I shared that story with my friend, we were both just sitting in our, you know, I was sitting in my car alone and, and uh, we were just bawling and bawling and the power of God just hit hard because it shows you that God is into the details. God knows every single detail of your life. He knows exactly what you need down to the penny. He knows our needs. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. But he also knows what we desire in the depth of our heart. And when we cry out to him, God will make a way. 